Hello, Cowboy Church. Hello, everybody online on YouTube. You're part of this family, too. If you're new to the Cowboy Church, we know we don't pass the hat. We don't pass the boot. We put, Please put your tithes and offerings in the red barn. If you're new to us on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And then you can go to donate if you feel so moved to. So please do that. I'm not a theologian or a Bible scholar. I never did finish my first semester of college. And I only graduated high school on time because of my grandmother was the president of the PTA. And my grandfather, Tony, he knew people. So, so what qualifies me to stand before you and talk about the good news of Jesus? Nothing. I lost my place. There it is. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody all about somebody who saved my soul. Amen. Okay. Yeah. No, no, thank you. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Amen. Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Them were the 11 remaining disciples after Jesus' crucifixion. Those are the first words he spoke to them after he had arisen and appeared to them at all at the same time. So what is a disciple? A disciple is someone who knows certain things, a dedicated follower of Jesus. You're here today and online. So, therefore, I take it you are a dedicated follower. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Therefore, you are a disciple. Are you preaching the good news? Okay. Do you want to know certain things? Come to a Bible study or a barn fellowship as we call it. Get with other Christians. Simply share with someone what Jesus has done for you. Because you know he's done something. Guaranteed. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Oh, when is Jesus coming back? He promised. Disciples, get busy. He isn't coming to the whole world. Here's a sermon about Jesus and the kingdom. So spread the news. I am so ready for an eternity and a new heaven and a new earth and the presence of God. Amen. Hey, I heard a great joke about amnesia, but I forgot it. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm just, I feel pretty, I feel different this morning. I feel like the Holy Spirit is working in us today. I feel he, the Holy Spirit's always with us, always. He made us that promise he'll never leave, he'll never forsake us. But we need to be listening, open our ears and our eyes and and feel the Holy Spirit. He will work through us. And uh, what I'm going to preach about today, I'm going to take that off for a minute. I want to be sure that, or people ask me a, a question, how do I know I'll go to heaven? Do you know today when when you leave this earth, you're going to be, you'll go to heaven? Amen, amen. Who, who's not sure? Be honest, who's not sure? Who has a little bit of doubt? Praise the Lord, everybody's going to be on the bus. Woo, I like that. But if, if there's somebody in here that may have a little doubt, but you're not raising your hand, that's okay. There's no condemnation in your feelings because feelings has a lot to do with this sermon I'm going to preach today. I want to start off with a poem, and it's called We're Hanging Him Tonight because I don't know if this feller knew where he was going or even thought about it. But his background and raising was special. And we're going to be in a, got up there? 1 John 5, 6 through 13 today, if you want to get your Bibles and, and tune in. But listen to this poem right here. He was such a nice young feller, come from good North Texas stock, had a proper church upbringing, family solid as a rock. But somewhere the boy got twisted, heard the painted siren song on the streets of hell's half acre where they say the lad went wrong. What a loss of time and talent. What a song to go unsung. 
seems the fruits of life are wasted on the foolish and the young. Now, he could have turned out different, been a kind and decent man, but tonight his earthly judgment is in the vigilante's hand. And somewhere his mama's crying as she prays by candlelight. She'll never hold her child again because we're hanging him tonight. The choices that are made. You know, this young man talks about uh, a church background, being raised by his mom and daddy in church. Or his mama has mentioned her, but he had the foundation. He had the seed. But as we all have the will, free will, to choose, this boy choose something different. And I today, myself, I want to choose that I know, that I know, that I know that I have been forgiven. I'm going to be taken to heaven. When it's my, when Jesus is through with me here, sometimes Lisa says, well, Jesus ain't ready for you. And the devil don't want you. <laughs> Praise God. You know, that gives me another hour or two to talk to y'all. And uh, that's the most popular question, brothers and sisters, that, I, that I'm asked. How can I be sure? How can I be certain that I'm a Christian saved and going to heaven when I die? I've had to sit down many times and talk. And then just, and we just talk back and forth. And it's like this. Sometimes in my or your life, we accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. We accepted him as our Savior. And whether it was at the altar, depending on what church he's at, or it was at a Bible study, or it was at a friend's house when you're talking, maybe a Bible study there, or just to supper, you get to talking about the Lord. Or maybe you're sitting at the windmill in the middle of a pasture. And I know this happened to a man named John Gaither when he was 12 years old, I believe. One of the greatest friends I had. I only knew him for a week. But he was a friend of a brother in Christ. He got saved at 12 years old. Folks abandoned him. And he was at that windmill working on the ranch. He got him a job as a cowboy. But he knew that God, he knew God was real because he'd heard about it in his, younger, in his younger days from the rancher's wife. And he accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior right there in the middle of that 10,000 acre pasture at that windmill with the running water. He got saved. Then over time, now I'm, I may be kind of stepping on some toes right here, maybe not. We began to wrestle with desires. Amen? And we backslide somewhat. And we get to struggling. We are struggled with sin. And then we, we begin to question if we died right now, that's where doubt comes in. See, I've already talked about wrestling with desire, struggling, and doubt. We, did, we doubt when we get into heaven, and then we get saved again. Saved again. Now, that's going to be something today. We've got a baptism, a rededication here after a while. And I'm so proud that this young man has decided to change his life. He's been in that walk for a while now, but he's changed his life. He's going to live for God. He told me when he was younger, he got baptized. But at a young age, he didn't fully understand what baptism meant. He didn't fully understand the Word of God. But now, over the few years that he's been here, he's listened. He's got in his Bible. He talks, me and him talk quite a bit. And now I know that I know that I know this man's been saved. This man wants to follow God. He's going to be baptized here, rededicated in just a little bit. But now, he understands the wisdom and the power of Jesus Christ. He understands where he needs to be, not where he wants to be. And he's given himself to God. And he's going to be a leader. And this is Happy Father's Day. He's a father to children. Our father's a father to us. It's all God's plan, brothers and sisters. That's going to be a glorious time today. And God wants us to be assured. He wants each and every one of us to be assured, to, to know that we're sure going to go to heaven. If we're, if we're true, faithful, believing Christians. And if we read John, 1 John 5, 6 through 13, uh, especially in the key verse of 13. But I'm going to read this to you right now. We're going to start at 6. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by blood, by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All one. How far are we back on seven? Okay. And there are three that bear witness. Now, I'm going to go to verse nine. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. 
For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. He who believes in the son of God has the witness in himself. And he who does not believe God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the testimony that God has given his son. And this is the testimony that God given us in, for eternal life. And this life is, is in his son. Eternal life in Jesus Christ, only in Jesus Christ. Period. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God doesn't have life. You're looking at death. Eternally separated from God. Verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may what? You may know. You may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Amen? Amen. Now, we can know because God's going to, He tells us we know. He'll let us know. He'll show us we know if we have the Son, if we're, if we're with the Son of God. Mm. He wants us to be assured, especially in verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know. That's the word, brothers and sisters. You have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to ask y'all some questions. Y'all can holler out the answer or you can ponder on them just a little bit. I want to ask you today, do you believe in the gospel? The gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Probably many folks confuse something, though. They confuse faith with feelings. That's what I was talking about a while ago. There's difference. There's a big old difference. Because some people say, well, I just don't feel like I'm being, like I'm saved. And in church, though, I feel like a Christian because I feel the presence of God when I'm sitting in the church. And I gave, when I gave my life to Jesus, I felt like I was saved. I felt something changed in me. But feelings, brothers and sisters, change up and down every day. There's a difference between faith and feelings. And I think this will be clear in just a moment. I want you to take note. Feelings are not the way to know for sure you're a Christian. Did that, did that kind of confuse some of you? Did you think, well, I always felt like I was a Christian. Feelings ain't got much to do with it right now. Nowhere in the Bible does it say or describe our salvation is based on feelings. Don't take my word for it. See if you can find it. I challenge you. You know, when you, when, you, when you think your salvation is based on feelings, that's like a hen on a cue ball. Think about this, or a turnip, a hen sitting on a turnip. A hen sees that, you know, she's a laying hen, she's one mama hen, and she sees a cue ball or a turnip, she's going to sit on that thing and try to hatch it. And he may sit there forever and ever, but nothing's going to happen. Remember that hen on the cue ball, you can use that with your kiddos. But in the Bible, it tells us our salvation is based on faith. Praise God, faith. In a marriage relationship, you may not always feel being in love with your spouse. Because feelings, I'm going to tell you what, they come and go. But the moment you said, I do, brothers and sisters, you've entered into a covenant with that person. And in the same way, when you become a Christian, you entered a covenant with God. Does that make sense to you? I don't hear no amens out there. Y'all sleep? And it doesn't depend, with God, it doesn't depend on how you feel at times. Whether you feel it or not, you're still married. You made that covenant. With your spouse, you made that covenant with God Almighty. So, I'd like to ask you instead of how you feel, I'm going to ask you, what do I believe? Think about that for just a second. Do I really in my heart believe the gospel as it's described in the scriptures? Do I? Well, in John chapter 5, verse 24, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into a life. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that's eternal life he's talking about. Passed from one to the other. Woo! Second question. Slow down. Lisa's back there going. I know. I'm going to settle down a little bit. Is the spirit moving in my life? I want you to ask that question about yourself. Is the spirit moving in your life? Do you sense the Holy Spirit in your life? You feel it? 
I want to tell you the Holy Spirit does several things. And they're biblically taught. But he does several things in your life when you're walking in the Spirit. Do you sense the Holy Spirit leading you in the decisions you have to make? Do you go to the Father and, and talk to Him? Do you feel He's leading you in the right direction? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you feel that you sense He's convicting you of your sin when you go against God? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I like this. I'm seeing a lot of heads bobbing right now. Listen to the Lord. When you go against God, you feel guilt or remorse, reminding you to bring back memories of God's will in your life from the Scriptures. Go back to God's Word. Now, I'm going to tell you how you know you're going to go to heaven. Follow with me. You've read from the past. Sense, do you sense the Holy Spirit comforting you? This is very important. In times of trouble or difficulty, he, the Holy Spirit empowering you to do certain things in life you wouldn't do on your own strength, on your own accord. Can you sense him, his producing fruit in your life? Can you sense this, brothers and sisters? Love in your life, joy, amen, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness. And here's one that I used to think macho man didn't listen to, meekness. Jesus Christ was meek, but he wasn't no wussy. I'm going to tell you that. Do you, does you feel the Holy, the Holy Spirit giving you self-control? That is very important. Easy to slip a cog when you don't have that. All of these, all of these things can only be produced by the Holy Spirit. You hear me? By the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's a unique thing for Christians. For Christians. Romans 8, 16. Here's another one. Romans 8, verse 16 states, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. He testifies with our spirit. Oh, that's togetherness, brothers and sisters. That's the covenant I'm talking about. Non-Christians, unbelievers, those who are not quite there yet, they don't experience the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And they may have a guilty conscience about something, but that's entirely a different thing. Entirely. The Holy Spirit will bring back God's Word and will, God's will in remembrance, so you can experience godly remorse. Not just throwing it over your shoulder. Some of you know, a lot of I'm sorry is just, they're not solid. But when you have godly remorse for going against the Lord, for the sins in your life, he will also lead you into a path that you really should be going. You know, according to the word of God, amen. He's there. If you don't experience this or sense the presence of the Holy Spirit, it don't mean you ain't saved. It means, brother and sister, there's something the gate shut or something, there's a bump in front of you that's blocking you from having that relationship, that intimate relationship with Jesus, whatever's in your life. It's in, through the power of the Holy Spirit, which simply means you need to confess. Now, this is so simple. You need to confess your sins and repent from them and pray and reconnect with God to sense the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, and He'll be working. Praise Jesus. It's... I don't know what, I used to think this way, I guess, this thinking thing. And I, I've, I've confessed my sins, and I repented from my sin, but I'll be jiggered if I didn't fall back into some of them. We're of the flesh. Satan's still going to, he's going to be grabbing and holding you wherever he can. He's going to be coming through a crack, a smallest crack, to take control of you. We're going to sin, but when we take Jesus Christ as our Savior... And we want to ride for his brand. We want to follow Jesus. We want to be a live a righteous life as we can. We can't be righteous. No one is righteous but God. But we can try to be like God. When we do that, I tell you what, we're, we're, we're doing all the better. Because like in 8.16, it says, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. Mm. Tell you what, it's just amazing to me how some people think, well, they I'm, I'm not a sinner. Anybody here not a sinner? Don't you raise your hand. Don't make me come out there. I got a cedar stave somewhere. We're all sinners. And just because, I mean, we're saved sinners. But that not mean we ain't going to fall and stumble. But don't let that be the barrier to keep that relationship and that covenant with our Lord. Don't let, don't let that come between us. Between us. Between you and him. 
Mm. See what? I love it. I love to sense the power of the Spirit in my life, and I love to sense the power of Him working. Amen? I got one more question I want to ask you. Do you desire, do you want to live a godly life? This is something you need to think, think about too because it takes work. It takes work, but it's a joyous work. Do you desire to serve? Do you desire to obey? Amen. Do you desire to share God's truth with folks whether they're saved or not? Do you do it? I didn't hear as many yes. Yeah, yeah. You know what? We quit making butt tracks in the sea and make footprints in the sand. We get out there and we talk about our Lord. Mm. Use your spiritual gift that God gives you to live a godly life. And this is proof, brothers and sisters, when you do these things that you are a Christian. You are saved. Unbelievers don't have the desire. They don't have an inner desire to truly please God. A scripture that comes to mind I, when I was studying on this this morning, I added this to it. It's Romans seven fifteen. This is what happens to a lot of us. Now, if y'all if y'all disagree, there's the door. Romans seven fifteen says, "For I want to do right, but I don't do it, and I do what I hate." Isn't that all of us? We want to do right, but sometimes we just slip back a little bit. We're taking a step forward, two steps back. We end up doing the things we hate to do. But God gives us that authority in the name of Jesus Christ to keep stepping forward. Pick us up and lift us and take us on. You hear me? The fact that you have this desire and you're wrestling with your sin and, it, and try hard to live to please God, it bothers you so much that you disobey God. This is proof that God is still working in you when you have that, 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 that feeling. I'm sorry, God. The Holy Spirit's working in you. If you didn't give a rest behind, you would say, what about it? I'll change tomorrow. Or what about it? Nobody, it ain't hurting nobody. It's hurting God. Yeah. It burdens God. You know, when, had, what, how we talk. I'm guilty as, a, as, a, as anybody. Sometimes I say wordy dirge. You know, I, I get bucked off, and that's the worst time. <laughs> and, but I never say nothing about the biscuits being burned up, baby. You know, there's, yeah, I can self-control. God gives me that, but there's times when I lose that self-control. Does that mean I'm going to hell? No. It means that I go right to God and say, Lord, Jesus, forgive me. I lost it, but please give it back to me. And he will, brothers and sisters. He will. And when you desire to serve, obey, and share God's truth with folks. Hmm. I'm going to be closing here pretty quick. It's not a long message today. And I want to get in Romans 7, 14 through 25. Y'all turn to your Bibles if you have it. Romans 7, 14 through 25. Law cannot save you from sin on this scripture right here. For we know what the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will do, I do not practice, but what I hate that I do. We covered that a while ago. Then... I do what I will not to do. I agree with the law that it is good, but now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. You know, does that make sense to everybody? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. And that's each and every one of us. In your flesh, nothing good dwells. For, it, for to will is present for... For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Now, verse 19. For the good that I will do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. That means you're going to just jump back into it again, but you don't want to. And you should not. Now, if I do what I will not to do, boy, this is hard to read all this stuff. I can read it and I can kind of savvy what he's saying. I just don't know how to spit it out. I find then a law that evil is present with me. Now, that one I know. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thank God through Jesus Christ. He will deliver me from this. And it says, so then with the mind, I, I myself serve the laws of God, but with the flesh of the law of sin. Whew, 
That's a big mouthful, ain't it? Get your act together. That's what I'm telling you. That's what God's telling us. Get your act together. He shows us the way. And he'll give us this rewards. Even if we're on this stinking earth. You know, we're not, we're not of this world. We're just passing through. We're in this world. If you believe the gospel of the scriptures, if you sense the power of the Spirit working in your life, if you desire in your life to live, as, live a godly life, I've got three things to say. Walk in boldness. Get her done. The boldness that God has promised you, and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you know that you know that you know you're saved and you are heaven bound. Now, that answers the question that I've been asked so many times. How do I know if I'm saved and I'm going to heaven? I've just described it here. Y'all want to go back and do it again? We got 20 more minutes. Or did y'all get it? Amen. And who gave it to you? Jesus. That's in the Word of God right here. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you one thing. Do not ever let anyone steal from you the assurance that God wants to give you and that you are His child. And if you die today, you will be directly into the presence of God. That's it. That's the good news. That's the truth. And brothers and sisters, I praise my Lord. I'm so, I'm so humbled. And I thank Him every day for the life He has given me. Didn't used to be this way, but it's this way now. Thank you.